the end of it. So, Ms. Merchant, you don't have much more to pull on here. But uh, he answered that last question. So, what's your next one? Um, and, and Judge, I, I didn't hear the answer if they were in a relationship uh, January 25th, 2021. Mr. Bradley, do you recall the question? I, I, I recall the question, and I can't tell you accurately whether or not they were in a relationship at the time. You asked me about him bringing me a contract. I said he did bring me a contract, and that is accurate. Do you remember prior to, do you remember knowing Ms. Willis prior to her taking office as the DA? I had very little contact with Ms. Willis. Um, I knew her um, through my business of coming down to Fulton, if that's what you're asking. Yes. You knew her through the business. Um, so had, you had met her prior to your contract. I'm going to object to relevance at this point as to why we're here today. Sure. Judge, he doesn't remember much of anything right now. And so I'm trying to create a timeline to hopefully piece this together. All right. Well, um, I, I'm not seeing really the, the likelihood that that's going to have any success. I'll, I'll let you ask a few more questions, but if he doesn't have a date, then I don't know that you're going to be able to create one today. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> So the time that you had this contract from January 2021 until January 2022, did you come in and out of the DA's office? Yes. Okay. And so were you able to witness Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis interact during that time? I'm going to object. This has been asked and answered. It was addressed at the last hearing about Mr. Uh, Bradley's access to and from a specific room to pick up files. And Mr. Bradley said that sure. he rarely saw them together, uh, but this was... Yeah. I think the only avenue that was closed at the last hearing was his personal knowledge, potentially through, well, actually, no, if he testified, it was that he had no personal knowledge. It's knowledge that conveyed to him that was cut off at the last hearing. That's really the only thing we hadn't been able to explore, unless you correct me if I'm wrong. Knowledge that was conveyed to him by? By somebody else. That's, that he claimed at the time was privilege. I found that it's not. That's what we're here to explore. Okay. Um. Do you remember telling me that not many people knew where they met? I'm going to object as to relevance, as to his personal knowledge, yeah. which is what 602 requires. Yeah, I mean, we're back to the same point, Ms. Merchant. His personal knowledge is what I'm asking him what he told me. But he hasn't yet told you how he knows that. And so if, unless he, he can establish why he should be testifying on this at all, then there's no relevance. And I don't know what, how he knows that. that would then be the ask next, him. But that would be the next question. But ask I first, him how he knows it. I first have to establish that he said that. No, you don't. You could go the other way around. <laughs> um, when you told me that it started when you left, when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton, where did you gain that knowledge from? Well, I'm going to object because his testimony a few minutes ago is that he did not recall making that statement. All right, I'll overrule that. Mr. Bradley, answer the question if you can. Repeat the question. <clears throat> when you told me that their relationship started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton, where did you obtain that knowledge from? It was... I was speculating. Um, I didn't have a um, – no one told me I was speculating. No one told you that? No one told me that. You were speculating based on things that had been told to you or things you had observed? So I'm going to object as to uh, the nature of uh, this line of questioning because – the witness has made it clear he was speculating as to how or what he knew. And if it's speculation, it's inadmissible before this court. All right. But the motivations for his reason for speculating would be admissible, so I'll overrule that. Thank you, Judge. Was this speculation, when you told me that, was that based on things that had been told to you and things that you had witnessed? I never witnessed anything. Right. So, um, you know, it, it was – Speculation. I can't tell you um, anything specific, if that's what you're you're asking. You can't tell me anything specific 
as to why you speculated about that? No, this was however many years ago. I mean, I don't recall, but no, I, I don't. Did you have any reason to lie? I don't know if speculation is lying, but I'm... Well, let, let me just talk. Show me where in this text it says you're speculating. You're you didn't guessing. ask me if I was speculating or guessing. I didn't ask you, but tell me if it says anywhere here. That no, it, if this is the same one that you just showed me, it does not. And you're welcome if you need to to look at your text. Um, is there anywhere in here that indicates that you didn't have knowledge of the no. relationship? I'm going to object. The line of questioning your honor directed counsel to you. Uh, explore is where he got the knowledge. He's explored that. He said it's speculation, and he didn't get it from any source other than his own speculation. Sure. So I, think I, I think we're flushing that out, and uh, uh, I think it's her right to have a little leeway on this if he's an adverse witness. Thank you, Judge. And Judge, these speaking objections are clearly coaching the witness because he's regurgitating. Your Honor, I am. <laughs> I object what? and take offense to that comment. I'm objecting based on the law, and I'm, and I'm making a record for the court. Right. Um, so I, I, I take offense to that comment. It's not the case. All right. Well, uh, I think we can start with uh, objection, the grounds, and the rule number. And then if I need more, I'll ask. Thank you. All right. Thank you. What did Nathan tell you about the relationship? Objection. Hearsay. Nathan has testified. Yeah. Hearsay. It's still hearsay. It's an out-of-court statement being brought in for the truth of the matter asserted. So hearsay. Judge. Right. Yeah, this would be for impeachment by contradiction, <coughs> which would Thank be you. an exception to the hearsay rule, and admissible as substantive evidence, and the privilege issues are overruled. Thank you, Judge. Well, I, I think you just overruled the privilege objection. But we don't know when he's talking about, so we've already established that December 2018 right. was the day of the prayer work. Sure. And that's something I covered in the in-camera hearing, and I'm based on what he told me in that in-camera hearing. Uh, I don't believe any statements to this effect were covered by privilege. And Judge, I just want for the record, because sometimes the record doesn't reflect where people are looking, and that when I ask a question, Mr. Bradley is looking at Mr. Wade and his lawyer to wait for them to object, and they're clearly interacting somehow in the court. So I just want the ref record to reflect that, because it wouldn't otherwise. It's there now. Uh, you. Do you have a question was put to you, Mr. Bradley? Judge, one of my lawyers is standing, is sitting right in the back. Hey, um, we don't behind. want to go down that rabbit hole. You can look wherever you want. Yeah, and I'd never looked at Mr. Wade or his attorneys. That sounds quite true. All right. Mr. Bradley, question was put to you. Uh, repeat the question, please. Yes. So I showed you, uh, or I asked you, I'm sorry, the question, the last question I asked you was, what did Nathan Wade tell you about the relationship? Same objection, yeah. And that's already been ruled upon. I recall him stating that at some point they were dating. Uh, I can't tell you what date that was. It was made in confidence. We were in the back of our office. Our offices were the only two in the back. There was no one else present. That is all I can tell you at this time. One time? One time. You only had a conversation with him one time about the relationship? Objection. Asked and answered. No, I think that's a uh, clarify for a thorough and sifting cross. Ms. Merchant. I do not recall any other time that he mentioned uh, that they were in a relationship. No. Um, so other than, so you talked about this one time, um, and you said you don't know when it was, though, correct? That is correct. Um, was it before Mr. Wade, before you got the contract in Fulton County? Let's start with that. I do not recall. Okay. And um, how did it come up? Say again? How did it come up? I do not recall how it came up. Um, it was in the back. I know it was, I know where it occurred. Um, in our offices in the back. I can't tell you what we were discussing prior to that. Okay. Did you receive an email from me on January 6th um, with a motion attached? 
I think I did, yes. Yes, I know, I, know I, I received a, I don't know if the date is January 6th, but yes, I received that. Okay. Yes. Um, so you remember receiving that? Yes. The date, okay. Um, and you reviewed it, and then you, you and I spoke about it. You recall that? Did we speak over the phone, or are you saying through a text? That's what I'm asking you. I, I can't remember um, whether it was text to phone or. But you recall us speaking one way or another. One way or another, yes. Okay. Um, and where I was trying to confirm the facts in that filing. I think I remember um, <clears throat> there was a line of about. Um, The accuracy of um, how much money that my office, the law, the law office of Terrence A. Gradley, uh, have received, um, and whether or not that was going to be in the motion or not. Well, there wasn't a discrepancy. I had kept that out. You asked me to put that back in, correct? I don't. I, I recall you. Um, that may be accurate, yes. And you thought, because you thought it might be suspicious if you were left out of the motion. No, I, I, I think... We discussed that it should reflect the accuracy because the accuracy was that I received, um, I had a contract and received 74 grand, 74,000. Um, and I think you had put in there that Mr. Campbell had received a certain amount and then you also had put in there that Mr. Wade had received a certain amount, but there was not anything in there originally and I said that it needed to be accurate. I needed to be accurate as far as that I had received seventy four thousand. Right. That's correct. Because you did not want anyone knowing that you had talked to me. I wanted you to be accurate as far as the accuracy of our message or or your filing. Okay, so that was your, so your interest was in, in accuracy in the filing. I didn't reach out to you and say, send me a copy of your motion. Right. I didn't reach out to you to say that you were, that I'm going to be in your motion. Right. I asked you to review it for accuracy. Right. For accuracy. And I just stated that it was inaccurate. And the inaccuracy that you pointed out was the thing about your time or how much you had made. That was the inaccuracy that I, I saw that jumped out was the fact that um, I saw that I was left out when you had put okay. the firm um, the money was. I did not. I did not. Um, when I responded to that, it was for that specific reason. Okay, and I agreed I would put that back in that section back in, and I correct. Did. I did put it back in, and I sent it to you again. I don't recall getting a second email from you now. But you were happy that I put it back in, or that I agreed to put it back in. And object this to relevance. Yeah, we need, we need to get to more material aspects. Well, uh, yes, Judge, I, I'm moving along, I promise. So you asked me, you did ask me to put that back in. Well, an answer to relevance. Yeah. Well, he didn't answer that last question, so he ruled. You did. Can you confirm you did ask me to put that back in for it to be accurate? Yes, that's correct. I said that. Um, yes. Okay. And then I asked you if everything was accurate, and you said, looks good. Correct? I, I recall you asking that, but the looks good was applying to the accuracy of the 74,000, that's it. Okay. 
So when you reviewed the motion and you specifically pointed out that one thing that you that you found inaccurate, you didn't point anything else out that you found inaccurate in that motion, though, correct? No, I did not. And that motion alleged that their relationship began when Ms. Willis was in municipal court. If I can read reread the motion, but um, I don't recall. But if that's what it says, but I, I get my saying um, that it looks good was when you put back in the seventy four thousand um, into your motion. Okay, and that's that wasn't what I was asking. What I was asking is you didn't tell me that there was anything else inaccurate in the motion, though, right? But I didn't state that anything was accurate other than the 74000 Now, when I told you that I had this motion that I was preparing, you asked me to send a rough draft. No, that's incorrect. May I approach, Judge? You may. Well, which page are you showing? They're not page number. It's um, January 6th. I just, yeah, of course. Talking, and you asked me to send you a rough draft, and I told you, okay, but I didn't want it to be leaked before I filed it. Right? That is correct. That is correct. So you're the one that asked me to send a rough draft. Yes, that's okay. correct. Yeah, yes, that's correct. And that was at 10:08 on Saturday, January 6th. Um, and then you got an email from me with that rough draft that at 10:25 that same day, correct? The, yes. We need to look at that. Um, if if it says 10:25, then um, I know you sent me an email. Um, Why he's looking at it? I'm I'm going to object us to ask the name to spin through the fact that he sent him a copy of the motion, whether okay. he specifically said rough draft or not, and then asked about the accuracy. He's explained. His answer, and I uh, to ask an answer. Understood, Mr. Vaughn. We're getting there. Overruled for now. Um, and then I responded when we were talking about that footnote that we were just talking about. I said I took it. I took it out, but I can add it back. And you said yes, add it back. Do you remember that? I answered that yes. And then I said anything else, anything that's inaccurate, <coughs> and you responded looks good. Do you recall that? Let me see the. And there, I, I don't know where the exhibits are. Um, they were admitted. That re refresh your memory? It says looks good, but as a, as I stated before, I was responding to you putting me back into the motion for receiving $74,000 in a contract. Well, that's not what this says. This says... You said, yes, add it back, and then I said, anything else, anything that isn't accurate, and you responded, looks good. So you weren't responding to put it back in. Your Honor, I'm going to object to this. not his motion. He wasn't the affiant of, of the motion. Oh. There five the Overruled, Mr. Bobby. I've said twice. Overruled, Mr. Bobby. I've said twice that the looks accurate was, or I've said more than twice, was for the 74000 Do you remember telling me about um, Nathan and Fawny coming to your office and spending time together at your office? No. I mentioned, um, I do recall testifying on the 16th that she had come to our office. And that was before she was elected as district attorney, correct? I recall that that was when she was district attorney. Because I said that there was a meeting held at my office. And who was at that meeting? I, I'm 
now I can't tell you that. I don't recall. But you know, Ms. Willis was there, Mr. Wade was there. It was at our office. Um, actually, uh, Ms. Willis was there, and there were other people there. Mr. Wade was not in that meeting. He was, he was in the back. Uh, I wasn't even in that meeting. Why did she hold it at your office? Then? I have no idea. Um, you also remember telling me about them spending time together at her law office before she took, <coughs> took her job. I don't recall. Do you? I don't recall. Do you have something to? Well, what I'm asking is, um, she, so let, let's back up a sec. So Ms. Willis rented a law office from Evans, from, or Andrew Evans and another lawyer, I think Stacy Evans. Um, you have knowledge of that, correct? No, I'm going to object to hearsay. If, well, how does he know the information? That would be the correct question. Okay. Um, Ms. Mershon? I don't really know even how to respond to that. Um, hearsay, I'm asking if he knew that she rented yeah, office he may, have, he may have been there. He, he, <laughs> right. may have, he, may, he may have seen a business card or something at some point. I think he can answer that. I've never been to Ms. Willis's office when she was in private practice. I've never dealt with where she rented. I didn't even know where her office was. So. Do you remember, though, knowing that she rented an office? Yes. From the office? Yes. You did know That's, that, that, that is correct. Yes. Okay. And do you remember telling me that Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis would rendezvous at that office? I'm going to object to, again, hearsay as to how he knows that information. He said he has no personal knowledge. He, he did just, not say he has no personal knowledge, Judge. He hasn't even answered it. No, he said in general he had no personal knowledge, so it's not been established the source of how he would know this because he said he's never been to her office. All right. Uh, Ms. Merchant, if you, if, if you, uh, I know you're trying to impeach him by a, uh, a prior and consistent statement, but unless you can first back up and show why each statement is actually something that you had knowledge of, I, I don't know if this is going to be relevant. And Judge, I'm not even there yet, but again, that, a speaking objection, and so now I would anticipate what our response is going to be next. Um, I didn't ask anything that was objectionable, but these objections are coaching the witness. I asked if he had knowledge. That's it. I didn't ask, did someone say this to you? I didn't ask, what did this person tell you? I asked if you knew. Well, no, you're, you're asking if you had knowledge, and then you say of something specific. So. Once I get an answer to that, if he has knowledge, then I will follow up with where that knowledge came from. All right, well, let's try again. So my question is, do you have knowledge of them meeting at that office? Objection, foundation. Okay, all right, overruled. Do you have knowledge of them meeting at that office? I have no personal knowledge, if that's what you're asking. I didn't ask that yet. I asked if you have any knowledge. Objection, that would be hearsay. Overruled. Not if it came from Mr. Wade. We don't Wade, know where Judge. it came from. So he said, how do, you, how do you know, Mr. Bradley? How do you know? Any knowledge that I would have uh, received would have come from my client at the time. Okay. So you had knowledge of this place that, that Ms. Willis worked. What did you know about them meeting at that office? Objection. Hearsay. It's not hearsay, Overruled. Judge. How he knows it, and then you ask the next question. All right. He's, uh, she's already, he's already asked the next question. Can you repeat the question? Yes. How do you have knowledge? What knowledge? Did, well, you just told us. You told us Mr. Wade told you. So tell us what Mr. Wade told you about Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade meeting at the Evans office. Uh, objection, Your Honor. Privilege. This clearly covers a time after December 2018 that would be covered by the privilege. Yeah. Um, overruled. You recall the question, Mr. Bradley? I do not. All right. You re-asked the question, Ms. Merchant. What did you learn from Mr. Wade? I was clarified that's where you learned it from. About Mr. Willis, Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis meeting at the Evans office together. I don't object to ask an answer. He's testified that. He hasn't answered. He, I haven't, we haven't heard an answer. 
He testified he had one conversation with Mr. Wade in the back of his law Judge, office. No, and, his, and his answer may change. So Take overall. Take your office to what, how to answer the question. I can't recall what the conversation was. Um, I do. I do recall um, knowing that they would that he would go down to the office or had been down to the office, but I can't tell you in what capacity or when or any of that. No. Mr. Wade told you that they had sex at the office, though, correct? I don't recall him stating that, no. You don't recall it? No. So it's possible he did say that? You just don't remember one way or another? I do not remember him saying that. Um, do you recall that he had a garage door opener to either a house or a condo or something like that of Ms. Willis? I've never seen a garage door opener. I've never been to Ms. Willis's house. I've never been to, and I'm trying to explain, I've never been. So no, I do not have any personal knowledge of him having a garage door opener. Okay. Let me ask the question again. Yes, ma'am. You didn't ask if you had personal knowledge, like as in you saw it. Do you have any knowledge at all from Mr. Wade or any source that he had a garage door opener to access one of Ms. Willis's residents? Not object to the, any sources to hearsay. All right, depends on the source. Overruled. No, not no. I don't have any knowledge. So when you told me that, did you just make it up? Do you have something that shows that I told you that? Yes. When well, we're going to go through all the texts we can. But do you? So was that made up though? But I'm going to object because I don't. I don't that. recall him having. Mr. Riley, just I'm going to object under 106 of the rule of completeness. I don't have that text message or any text messages that indicate that, Your Honor. And I, I don't have, if it was a text, I we had that conversation. I actually think it was when he was on speakerphone and Mr. Merchant was there. But I'm not sure. But, I mean, I if I'm asked to qualify exactly where that's from, I would Okay. So uh, rule of completeness would be if you need to introduce other texts to show the context. If you're saying you don't haven't seen a copy yet, then I think Ms. Merchant needs to do that before you can... And I don't decide have, your next step. And that's that's what I was asking him. If he if if that was something he just remembers making up. If he doesn't, then that's fine. But she referenced text messages and started to go into her packet of papers. Sure. Text so you don't have a text message to that. I don't. I, I would need some time to look through, and I don't remember if I have a text to that or if it was during a conversation. It was one of those. All right. Well, and he, I'm, has, he has now said that he has no knowledge. So on to your next question. Okay. Um, did Mr. Wade tell you about the trips that he and Miss Willis took? No. Do you have any knowledge of the trips that he and Ms. Willis took? Objection. Hearsay. Uh, overruled. I do now. Okay. But you did not before this proceeding? I did not know until you text that you found that in the um, deposition of his divorce. I mean, not, uh, not deposition, but something from his divorce. Okay. And... When you responded, um, doesn't surprise me. They took many trips to Florida, Texas, California. Those are your words, though, right? I'm going to object as to relevance. He said sure. he did not know and he actually learned from Ms. Merchant the information. He said he learned about certain trips from Ms. Merchant. Okay, you can uh, tie it down, but thank you. We'll, we'll see. see. He had no information on any trips that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade took. That he learned it all from Ms. Merchant. That was his testimony. Sure. Judge, I'm allowed Maybe the conclusion we, we reach. Uh, I think she's going to ask more than one question, though. All right, Ms. Merchant. And if, Judge, just so, so we can be clear, if he said more than one version, that's all relevant. We're allowed to talk about the different versions that he's told. All right, I've overruled the Thank objection, you. Ms. Merchant. Do you remember telling me that it didn't surprise you that they took the trips that I found in the divorce file because they took many trips to Florida, Texas, California? And then you told me that they took the trip to California when she moved her daughter there because she failed out of FAMU. Do you remember that? I don't recall that, but if, um, I, I don't recall. Okay. Um, Judge, may I approach? It's, sure. okay. it's in one of the ones I gave you.
refreshes your memory. So when that... <clears throat> Yes, but uh, one of the messages is cut off, and you asked about some other trips, and I said, no, I didn't, I think. And that was specific to, at the top of that, it says, no, I didn't. Yes. And so that was to the trips that you asked me about. And I think before that, when you mentioned that you found all these trips, I think I said, oh, wow. Yes, you did. And you did not know about all the trips that were taken, and you, you qualified it. You said, no, I didn't. When did it happen? And then the next test, which I can get, or you can look at your phone or whatever whatever refreshes your memory, you said was after you left, after the firm was dissolved, correct? Subject to relevance. Overall. It was after the firm. The, the, the trips that you said, no, you didn't know about, you told me those were after your firm had dissolved, correct? I think you mentioned that they were after I left, maybe, or... Um, whenever you found them, and I said, no, I didn't know about those trips, so. So you believe I mentioned that it was after you left? I'm quite sure you have the text message, and I will refresh my memory. Is it easier for you to refresh your memory with your own phone or with my, my printouts of screenshots? Well, you have the printout, so I'll go. Okay. Judge, um, the reason I'm asking is because I'm getting objections that I've cut things off, and it's just the nature of how you have to print out screenshots. So in order to avoid that, I'm happy for him to refresh his memory with his own phone, if that would be. Well, I, I don't know if he's accepting your offer or not. So you're Would gonna... that be easier for you? You can just provide the documents. Okay. Some water, Judge. Please. Yeah, let me see what we can do. Sorry, Judge, I'm just trying to pull out all of the messages that you may need. All right. Well, um, I don't really see at, so, at one, some point we're reaching the cumulative <laughs> point where we don't need to go through an entire six month text chain. You're making the point that he'd made some comments to you along the way uh, that led you to believe he had more knowledge than today he's testifying that he had. And so if you've hit the high points of that, then I don't know what else we can cover that actually moves the needle. Okay. I'll, I'll just I'll move on um, to the actual trips. So you told me that they took many trips to Florida. That refreshed your memory. You told me that. Was that based on your knowledge from Mr. Wade? That would have been based on anything that my client would have told me. I didn't have personal knowledge of whether they went or not. Um, the trips to Texas, and you, you're the one who typed Texas. Was that based on your knowledge from Mr. Wake? It would have been something that came from the client. I cannot tell you that I have any personal knowledge of any trip um, other than what would have been said by the client. Obviously, I'm not asking if you went on these trips. I'm asking if you have knowledge from Mr. Wake. Um, you also typed California. Was that something that you gained from knowledge from Mr. Wade? It would have been from the client um, at this particular point. Yes, it would have been from the client. And when you told me that the trip to California was to move her daughter out there, would that have been something you gained from Mr. Wade? Thank you, Jeff. Any knowledge that I have of any trip would have come from my client at the time. Um. You told us last week um, that Mr. Wade used your credit card one time. Um, do you know when that was? I do not. Relevance. How are you today? Well, uh, I think this would be impeachment of Mr. Wade's testimony if Mr. Wade testified that he had never used anyone else's credit card before. I don't object to ask the answer because it was covered during the last year where he acknowledged that Mr. Wade used his credit card. So I asked when. <laughs> I didn't, when? Okay. I didn't ask, did he? I asked, when did he? Let's go there. I do not have any dates of when Mr. Wade used my credit card. 
Um, I testified that we used the card for business um, and that um, throughout the business we would order paper or supplies or um, filing of depositions. Uh, I mean, the cost factor of cases is what I said, um, and that still applies today. Did he use my credit card? He did. But I can't tell you who he used that card, uh, what the trip was for. I can't even tell you at this time where he went. But he used it for a trip. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was for a trip, but I can't tell you where, when, why, or anything uh, to that nature. Correct. And he paid you back in cash? I never testified that he paid me back in cash. I said that he would either pay me back um, you know, I said I couldn't remember. I do not recall. Sometimes he would write checks. Sometimes he would pay cash. And that still applies today that I do not recall him paying me back cash, but I do recall him paying me back. And this was when you were still, before your partnership split up, correct? It would have been before I left the firm, yes. He wouldn't have used my card after I left the firm. Okay. So we can at least narrow down the dates to that. Of before I left the firm, yes. Okay, great. Um, and Mr. Wade gave you details about meeting Ms. Willis in Hapeville or East Point, as it was called. That's incorrect. He did not tell you about that? He didn't give me details. He did not tell you about meeting with Ms. Willis at an East Point or Hapeville apartment? At this time, I don't recall. No, I, I don't recall. Where did you get that information from then? It's just he doesn't recall if he even had that information. I asked if he got it from Mr. Wade, and he says he doesn't recall. So then I asked where he got it from. I do not recall where I got the information from. Okay. Um, and you and Mr. Wade were friends as well as business partners, correct? We were, we were friends um, in the sense of I've known him for um, years. Um, yes, we were friends. And um, you definitely did not want to come and be a witness in this case, correct? That is correct. And... Um, it was after, and we talked about this earlier, that Gabe Banks called you and then Nathan Wade called um, one of your friends. It was after that that you hired Mr. Chopra to assist you in this matter, correct? Was it after that? Um... So... I hired Mr. Chopra and I hired Mr. Graham. Now, Mr. Graham is here, and um, when I received the subpoena, Mr. Graham was here at the last hearing, but he also had to go out of town, but he was present. Mr. Graham, I called, um, and I had started getting calls from media and um, and I told him to respond to the media, I think, and that was somewhere around whenever you um, subpoenaed me. So it was, I can't tell you that um, it was that instance of those calls for um, Mr. Chopra, um, but I had engaged Mr. Chopra and Mr. Graham at that time. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask the question again because I didn't get an answer to it. After you got the phone call from Gabe Banks and from Nathan Wade to your friend. I think it was before that, but um, however, I, I think it was before that is what I'm stating. Um, when you got to <clears throat> Gabe Banks, you called me immediately. Well, actually, you texted me and then you called me. 
I, I didn't call you immediately, um, but yes, we did speak. Okay. And you texted me about it as well? That is correct. Okay. And um, then we spoke after Mr. Wade called your friend, and we talked about that as well, correct? That is correct. And at that point, you didn't mention anything to me about being represented by Mr. Chopra. But I didn't mention anything about Mr. Chopra or uh, that is correct. Yes, that, that, that was only my question. Um, let's see. I'm going to show you two more um, texts that I know I'm thinking about. All right, Ms. Merchant, we're going to do five more minutes. This is the last two questions. Thank you. 305, I'm cutting you off. Thank you. May I approach? Are these supposed to go together? No. Oh, these are two uh, are two separate dates? dates. Are okay, all right. Do you recall me asking you, um, do you think it started before she hired him? And you said, absolutely. You recall that? I see that in the text message, yes. Okay. And um, do you also recall me asking you how they would react if they would attack me? And you said, no, they will deny it. Your Honor, objection as to speculation as to how he thinks they will react. I think it goes to the motivations of the witness overall. And you told me that they will deny it. Yeah, that's written in there, yes. Um, I just want to, one last opportunity. You're an officer of the court, correct? I am. And you're under oath today? I am. Is there any of your testimony from today or the previous days that you want to correct? That I want to correct? Yes. No, I told you everything that you've, I've answered everything that you asked. Thank you. Oh, Judge, um, the, just so the counsel and the state can have one of those for the record, I can admit those, um, those few that I think that would be. Well, they weren't ever tendered. And, and, uh, so it's just for. I didn't know if they wanted right. to use them. But I'll, I'll hold on to them. If they need to be tendered at some point, then we can make them part of the record. All right. Any, uh, let me turn over to Mr. Sadow, if you're with us on Zoom. Mm, thank you, Honor. I do have a few questions. First thing I'd like to know is whether the court reporter has defense exhibits 26 and 27 from the last we have a different court reporter this time. We, uh, we had to have someone else fill in on such short notice, but I can s potentially send those to you if you need them. Well, <clears throat> I think I have working copies, but I want to make sure that the witness has a copy to look at. All right. We can try to work through that logistical challenge. This is, you said, 26 and 27? I believe that's correct. And 26, I think, is the same... Um, text messages that Miss Merchant was just asking about. It was two pages. I stapled it together, and it is dated January the 5th of this year. All right. Uh, I can print off a copy now, but why don't we start off with the questions that you have? Okay, because that's, that's where I'm going to start. But I'll, I'll see what I can do to work through it. All right, Mr. Sato, why don't we start with your question, and we'll see if we actually need to get a copy of those exhibits in front of the witness. All right. Uh -oh. Mr. Bradley? Yes, I'm here. 
all of a sudden I've lost you on the screen. Um, there we go. Well, you're on the Zoom. You're on YouTube, but you're not on the Zoom itself. But not that I can see. Um, I'm, I'm here. I can hear you. No, I know. I, I think his visuals may be a little different. So hold tight, Mr. Sadow. We could try to correct that. Was yeah, he was on. He was on when Miss Merchant was asking questions. Just, we need to add. Able to see you. I know. We need to add a spotlight to Mr. Uh, to the witness stand and a spotlight to Mr. Sadow, and we don't need all the other boxes. There we go. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, then hold tight, Mr. Sadow. We need to add you as well. All right. Now we're ready. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bradley, you have referred to Mr. Wade as your client, correct? Correct. You understand that the court has ruled that communications that you had with Mr. Wade are not privileged, correct? No, I'm, I'm aware that the court ruled that um, one specific uh, dealing with the time frame of one specific conversation wasn't privileged. Then I'm going to ask your honor if if is that the limitation or oh, are excuse me. The, the to clarify email. sure Mr. Sorry. Seda you asked whether all communications with Mr. Wade I think were covered that was not the extent of the ruling uh, the only ones that I deemed were not covered uh, and that I'd asked about in the in-camera hearing because those are the ones that were relevant were um, any, communi any communications Mr. Wade made regarding the existence or non-existence of a romantic relationship with Ms. Willis. Fine. Thank you, Your Honor. I understand. So going back to uh, this line of inquiry, when you say you don't have personal knowledge, what I want to ask you to start with is very simple. Did you have communications with Mr. Wade about the relationship between Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis? It's a simple yes and no. Yes. Okay. And is it your testimony that during the time you were representing him, which I understood started sometime in 2018, is that correct? That's the time frame that I remember, yes. Is it your testimony under oath that with regards to conversations with Mr. Wade about his relationship with Ms. Willis, that you only had one such conversation during the time you represented Mr. Wade? One conversation of what? I apologize. The, 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 only, thing we're talking, um, the only thing I'm asking about is that area that the court said is not privileged, which is the relationship between Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis. You've testified that during the time you represented Mr. Wade from 2018 on, that you only had one conversation with him in reference to the relationship between Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's fair, Larry. Yes. Okay. So out of the entire time, I'm talking about could be 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. When did you stop representing um, Mr. Wade? It was a few months after I left the firm. All right. Give me a, the approximate um, time. I left maybe um, June, July of 2022, maybe. Okay. So that would suggest that for assuming it's 2018, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and half of 2022, which is in the vicinity of four to four and a half years, you're testifying under oath you had one conversation about a relationship between Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis. Is that correct? I don't recall having any other conversation with Mr. Wade about him and Ms. Willis. Is it your testimony then that you don't remember any other conversation or there wasn't any other conversation besides the one? I'm going to object just to ask the answer. I think he's drilling down. I think that's a fair question overall. 
I don't recall. Um, I would say it was the one, but I, I don't recall. You testified that you did have communications with Mr. Wade about him visiting with Ms. Willis at a condo or apartment, correct? I don't think I testified that I had a conversation. I testified that any knowledge that I would have known anything about any condo would have come from that, but I don't recall a conversation about that. I, I do not recall a conversation about that. Okay. Do you recall any other thing at this point in time under oath that would indicate when the relationship started between Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis? I do not know when the relationship started between Mr. <laughs> Wade and Ms. Willis. I cannot recall okay, so that. Gonna, I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm going to drill down on that now, okay? Yes, sir. Mr. Wade was hired as the special prosecutor on November 1st of 2021. You're aware of that, correct? I have my contracts to show when I started. I, no one showed me the contract of when he started. But uh, so, but if, if he has a contract for November 1st of 2021, then that's correct. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest to you that the record will reflect that the contract between Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade was November 1st of 2021, correct? I want you just to accept that, okay? Is it your testimony that you don't know under oath whether or not there was a relationship between Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis before the contract? I do not recall any dates of when the con of when the relationship started. So whether you are pinpointing a date of when his contract started or not, I'm telling you I did not recall any specific date that he flat out said anything about a relationship with Ms. Willis. Okay. Now I want to go, based on what you've just said, let's go to what was Defense Exhibit 26. Okay, in Defense Exhibit 26, which I showed you last time, was two pages of text messages between you and Ms. Merchant, correct? Correct. Right. Now, the first page starts off by saying, Ms. Merchant, like, just date, don't hire him. Do you think it started before she hired him? You see that? Yes, I see it. Yes. And your response to that was absolutely I'm correct. I'm going to object, ask and answer cumulatively. All right. So, um, Mr. Sato, uh, I do think we went through a lot of these texts. We, we didn't go through this whole just one. A, just a second, Mr. Sato. All right. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Sato. Uh, you said we didn't go through this particular one? No, we went through, we stopped right there. I no, want to go. I, I went, I answered, because she, this so is the exact language not, that she just stated a few minutes ago. You could read it back. Okay, Mr. Sato, are, are you saying both of these two exhibits weren't already covered by Ms. Merchant? It was not gone, this particular language was not gone into. I'm doing it based on the exhibit itself. Um, well, let's do it this way. I now move into evidence defense exhibit number 26. All right, and I don't have, I have to search through my notes, but does anyone recall that that one actually been tendered in a minute already? It was. No, it was only presented to your honor for you to take back into camera ex parte to speak with Mr. Uh, Bradley and his counsel. Okay, uh, Ms. Merchant is indicating that it was admitted. I thought Mr. Sadow admitted it, but I'm organizing putting them back in order, um, so I, it might be easier if I just submit the copies of the all right. we're all referring to. All right, so Defense Exhibit 26 and 27 are being tendered. Um, well, actually, only 26 at this time. But okay, Defense Exhibit 6, any objection from the state? 26. 26. 
document and objectives as it relates to foundation and authentication. It was used to, uh, during the last hearing, for the purposes of uh, refreshing his recollection. And it's my recollection is that it didn't refresh his recollection, but I would renew my objection as to asked and answered and cumulative. Okay. Uh, as to foundation on authentication, I think uh, Mr. Bradley has recognized them as texts that he sent and received. So um, I think I'd, I'd overrule on that basis. Any other objections to their admissibility from any other uh, defense counsel? And seeing none, Defense Exhibit 26 is now admitted. Mr. Sadow. Thank you. All right, let's continue. Now I'm publishing it. After you said the word absolutely, on your own, you said it started when she left the DA's office and was judge in South Fulton. No, no, they it. met at. Yeah. Yeah. Asked and answered. All right, understood, Mr. Body. Uh, I'm going to let Mr. State have a few minutes on this, uh, and we'll go from there. But uh, judge, I, I, well, I'm sorry. Uh, I did answer this. I answered it for Ms. Um, Merchant. I stated that I was speculating. The judge, uh, someone objected to the speculation, and but this was the exact same language. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Bradley. Mr. Sadow Bradley, Mr. Sadow is asking the question in a slightly different manner, and I'm going to give him a little bit of leeway to do that. So, Mr. Sadow. All right. I hesitate to have to start back where I was, but after the word absolutely, you on your own said it started when she left the DA's office and was judge in South Fulton. They met at the Municipal Court CLE conference. That's what you said, correct? That is correct. Now, it's your testimony, at least so far, that when you, on your own, gave those two statements in the text, that you were merely speculating and did not have that knowledge from Mr. Wade. Is that your testimony under oath? Yes, that's what I testified to. Yes, sir. So you on your own came up with the whole notion that it started when she left the DA's office and was judge in South Fulton. That's, according to you, that's speculation on your part. Correct? Yeah, Overruled. That's the question, Mr. Brown. Yes, that's... that's Speculation on my part, yes. Right. It had nothing to do with what Mr. Wade had told you, correct? I answered your question. I was speculating to uh, the answer. That is correct. So maybe you can tell the court in your own words, why in the heck would you speculate in this text message and say that it started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton? Why would you speculate and say that in a text? I knew they had met um, at the municipal court um, conference. Um, How do you know that? I'll stop you right there. How did you know that? I answered that the last at the last. Uh, I, I'm I knew asking that. you now. I knew that because I'm asking when you now, I'm asking you questions, and you are in a situation where you get to give answers. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you, how did you know that? How did I know somebody when they met? Told, somebody told you that, right? When they met? Yeah. Yes, correct. Who told you? Mr. Wade told me when they met. So you had more than one conversation about the relationship between Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis because he told you where he met her. That's correct? incorrect. Incorrect. It's incorrect. It's incorrect. Okay. Let's go back to uh, let's go back to the exhibit. Why would you speculate that that's when they started the relationship? What would cause you to put that down as speculation? I don't recall, but um, why I thought that it started at that time, um, but. I do recall that he only met her, and I testified to that, that he met her in at that conference, which was in 2019. You knew that Ashley Merchant represented a defendant in this case when you were text messaging with her, correct? Yes, I did. Yes. And you knew that the reason she was asking you questions about Mr. Wade was because she was trying to show when the relationship began, 
correct? Mm, no, that's not 100% correct. It's not look at the beginning of the text message. Yes, but what, what messages were before this message, before she I, said that? I, I can't answer that question because I don't have them. All I have is what's in front of you. Yes. And it says that she says, do you think it started before she hired me? So you knew as the counsel for a defendant in this case that Ms. Merchant was asking you specifically about the knowledge that you had regarding the timing of the relationship between Wade and Ms. Willis, correct? Um, I mean, based on this, yes, uh, I see what and was in, And in response to that, you answered directly on your own what you now claim to be speculation, right? That's correct. So I ask you one more time before I move to the next part of this. Why would you speculate when she was asking you a direct question about when the relationship started. I have no answer for that. Except for the fact that you do, in fact, know when it started, and you don't want to testify to that in court. Overruled. That's the best explanation, isn't it? This is a Overruled. That's the real, that's the true explanation, because you don't want to admit it in court, correct? No, I have no direct knowledge of when the relationship started. You, I'm not going to go back through that again. But if you didn't know, and you were asked specifically as this exhibit shows, mm -hmm. maybe you can explain why you wouldn't say, I don't know. Is that a question? You're asking oh, me a yeah, question to definitely. answer? Definite question. Um, state that again. I apologize. If you're being asked, as we've just gone through with this text message from Ms. Merchant, yes, as the attorney for a co-defendant, yes, and she's asking you about the relationship, and she's clearly asking you about the timing, why wouldn't you just have said in response, I don't know when it started? I, I don't know why I didn't um, say I don't know. Maybe, again, it's because you know what the truth is, and that's why you answered exactly the way you did in Defense Exhibit 26, correct? No, I can't sit here and tell you that what you just stated was correct. Right. What you want the court to believe, and you want the rest of us to believe, is that for some unknown reason, upon being asked a direct question about when the relationship started, you decided on your own to simply speculate and put it down in a text message as opposed to putting down what you actually knew. That's what you want the court to believe, correct? That was a lot. So can you break that down? I apologize. You're asking me, do I want the court to, to, to just to, to, believe, to believe that instead of saying nothing, you decided on your own to speculate. Yes, I speculated. Yes, I, I've stated oh, that I speculated. Yes, sir. That's what you want the court to believe, correct? That's correct. Okay, now, then when you go to the next page of that, okay, you see it starts, the best that I can see, it starts in South Fulton. Is that what you have in front of you? Second page. The second page that I have says that's what I figured. Okay, I, that may be cut off from the one that I have. It's I'm looking at uh, my opening set line says in South Fulton. Is that on your second page? Um, no. So the, if you're going in order of the um, pages, no, neither page starts with South Fulton. Now, I, don't get caught up on whether it starts that way. Does the second page have a line in there that it says in South Fulton? 
Oh, uh, yes, I apologize. So, yes. That's fine. Yes. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. Yes. Um, okay. <clears throat> you say after in South Fulton, they met at the Municipal Court CLE conference, right? Yes. You see that? Correct. Yes, that's correct. And then Ms. Merchant says, that's what I figured when he was married. Is this accurate? Upon information and belief, Willis and Wade met while both were serving as magistrate judges and began a romantic relationship at that time. You see, that's what she said, right? No, I mean, so it says they Wait. met at municipal court CLE. The only other thing here says that's what I figured when he was married. There's no response for me on that day. And then there's another response. Um, I mean, I guess a question that says, is this accurate? Okay, that's what I was just, that's what I just went over with you. Okay, so I don't have um, anything in that, is this accurate at all? Um, I can show the court. No, no. It's just, it just says, is this accurate with the question mark? I don't have anything following that. You don't have, after that, upon information and belief, Willis and Wade met while both were serving as magistrate judges and began a oh. romantic relationship yeah, okay. with that. It's, it's, uh, I apologize. Uh, it goes to the next page. I apologize. No problem. Yes. Just want to make sure so that no, no. I, I see that now. Yes. All right. So that's what I just read mm -hmm. is exactly what Ms. Merchant said to you in the text, right? Yes, that was in the text. Is, is it accurate upon further information? Yes, that's there. And yes. again... Since you have told us that you were speculating when you gave the answer that we went over with previously, on this one, you don't say, I don't know. You simply correct her by saying no, municipal court, right? Yes, so the, she asked, was it accurate? And I said, it wasn't accurate. No, it wasn't accurate. It was municipal court. Right. And when you said it wasn't accurate, it was municipal court, you weren't, didn't say no, that's not accurate. They didn't start a rom romantic relationship at that time, correct? No, but I was referring to the municipal court. No, it wasn't accurate um, as it applied to the... I was answering the no municipal court, meaning if she, when she said, is that accurate, it was to the municipal court and not magistrate court. Okay. But you didn't say that the rest of what she asked you was accurate. You didn't say, no, that's inaccurate. That's not true. That's not accurate. You simply said the only thing that wasn't accurate was municipal court should be there instead of magistrate, right? So I was answering the question of it, it was a compound question. Um, and you I, was, I was answering the question of She wrote magistrate court, and I said, no, municipal court. Right, but it's not compound. It's one statement upon oh, information and belief. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, that's okay. It's, I know the feedback and the delay is, is complicates things, but I think you've adequately made your point here, and I don't think we need to belabor it much longer. Let's move on to the next issue. Okay, thank you, Honor. Uh, Mr. Bradley, prior to coming into court today, did you and your lawyer meet with anyone from the district attorney's office? No. I mean, your, no. Not, not that I know. I'm aware of, though. No. I did not meet any, to anyone. Sorry? I, I did not meet with anyone um, outside of my attorneys. Did you have any conversation? I did not. Meeting, conversation? I did not. So you have not spoken, if I understand you correctly, Prior to coming into court today, you've not spoken with the prosecutors? No. Right? I've not spoken to the prosecutors. I've not spoken to defense. Have you spoken to Mr. Wade? No. So, as far as just getting into the courtroom today, there's been no contact or conversation in it with any of the parties we just went over, right? There has not been any contact with defense or the state at all. I, I think I have basically just one or two more questions. 
Why would you see the need to speculate when you were texting with Ms. Marchant? I, I, I think we did cover that one, uh, Mr. Sadow. That, that, I think that exact question was already put to him. What would be the, what would be the next one? We, I'm, I'm trying to look. Let's go to 27. Defense Exhibit 27. Do you have that now, sir? I do, sir. All right. Uh, would you look at it and tell me whether or not the Defense Exhibit 27 appears to be accurate? Because I want to seek to introduce it into evidence. It consists of an email to you from Ms. Merchant and a text response from you, correct? But the text response was not in response. So, yes, it does consist of the email and a text response. I'm not saying that the text response applies to the entire email that was sent. I, I, all I've asked you right now is, are the yes is the email and the text are those accurate in the interaction that makes up defense exhibit 27 as it applies to the stapling of the email and the stapling of a text message chain yes it, it, that is defense uh defendants exhibit 27 this is um I, it's accurate okay i would move defense exhibit 27 in I believe it was treated the same way as 26 last time. Same yeah. objections, Mr. Abadi? Yes, Judge. All right. Overruled. Any other objections from defense counsel? Seeing none, defense exhibit 27 is admitted. Right. Anything else? Your Honor, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know whether you'll find this objection, but we're not all asking it, obviously. <laughs> all right. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Bradley, you realize that if you were to testify under oath, that you knew from Mr. Wade that the relationship between him and Ms. Willis existed before the contract in November 1st of 2021, that if you testified that you knew that from Mr. Wade, that would show that both Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade had lied under oath. You know that, don't you? Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I think that's going to call for an opinion on the uh, credibility of another testifying witness, so I don't think that would be an appropriate question. It's a, then that's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Sano. Mr. Stockton. Just, just briefly, Judge. We'll see. Mr. Bradley, um, do I understand from your prior testimony that Ms. Merchant sent you a motion to review prior to her filing it? Objection. Call some cumulative answers. All right. I'm going to give them just a little bit. All right. Mr. Stockton, maybe this is going somewhere else. Did... Did Mrs. Merchant send you a motion prior to January 8th of 2024 for you to review? That is correct. And did you, in fact, review that motion? That is correct. And did you indicate to Ms. Merchant that the contents of that motion seemed okay to you? Well, so you're referring to Exhibit 27, which, as I stated a few minutes ago, one is an email, one is a text chain. So in the text chain, when I, I never responded to the email. I never responded looks good or anything to the email that was sent to me. However, in the text chain, um, you're, what you all are trying to merge together is the fact that I was asked about um, the contract and um that and that contract was a seventy four thousand dollars and me being added back to that so when i said uh, and i think before that in that text um it referred to the me being added back and at that time i said yes looks good and you're aware and you recall that when miss merchant presented you with that motion she asked you not to disclose it to anyone until she filed it. Is that correct? Uh, we are covering, I think, the last five or six questions. We've covered ground. Let's get to that ultimate I, point. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to get there, uh, Judge. I promise you. Okay. Repeat the question. I'm sorry. 
she asked you not to disclose that motion to anybody until she filed it, correct? Uh, I think so. I think that was in the text message, yes. And you knew, in fact, it was her uh, intention to file that motion, correct? The actual motion that she, um, that was sent? Yes. I knew that she was going to file a, mo a motion, yes. Um, I do not think that that was the final draft or it could have been that she was working on it, but yes, I knew that she was going to file some motion, yes. And you knew that she presented that motion to you for your review so that she could make sure it was accurate, correct? Don, I'm going to object. All this is asked and answered in cumulative. All right, noted. I think Mr. Stockton's getting to the next point, so why don't we just ask that one? Is that correct? Did you? Uh, uh, I thought you were going to combine that with the next question, so we're not having to lay bit by bit every single Mr. time. Mr. Bradley, you knew that Mrs. Merchant was relying on your review to um, ensure the accuracy of that motion prior to filing it, correct? No. Speculation as to what he knew that Ms. Merchant knew. No, I'd, I'd, I'd overrule that. Mr. Bradley? No, so once again, I was excluded from um, the footnote of that motion and my review of it and I said hey you need to add me back to the footnote because I did have a contract and I did receive 74,000 um, if, if I may help you out let's talk just about that part of the motion that deals with the relationship between uh, the district attorney Willis mm -hmm. and Mr. Wade mm -hmm. When you reviewed that, you knew that she was that Ms. No, Merchant. I, no, I did not know that she was relying on me to for any any um, relying on me for any accuracy other than um, what was put in there. If about there was, the seventy four thousand, Mr. Bradley, if there was something patently false in that motion, you would have told Miss Merchant, wouldn't you? I can't say that I would or wouldn't have. I don't, I don't know what I would have told Miss Merchant. If there was something pat, patently speculative, you would have told Miss Merchant, wouldn't you? I don't know what I would have told Miss Merchant. I, she asked me, was it accurate? Um, we were discussing the 74,000 that it was left out. Again, if I may direct you just to that portion dealing with her, the relationship between uh, Mrs. Willis and Mr. Wade. You didn't, you didn't tell her that there was anything patently false in that because you didn't see anything patently false in that motion as it relates to the relationship. Repeat your question, I'm so sorry. You did not inform Mrs. Merchant that there was anything patently false in that motion that was that you were presented with as it concerns the relationship because you did not see anything that was patently false, correct? Objection asked and answered cumulative. All right, next question, Mr. Stockton. To stand. And you didn't see anything that was speculative in there, right. either, did you? I know, sustained, Mr. Stockton. I just want to ask you one more question. Um, I'm coming at from the other way that Mr. Sadow did. Did anybody from the district attorney's office or any witnesses in this, this case contact you about Ms. Merchant's motion from January the 8th of 2004 until today? Did anyone contact me about her motion? Yes, from the district attorney's office or any uh, witnesses or anybody else involved with the case besides the defense. Other than the call that I, the only personal call that I had was with Gabe Banks. I never spoke to anyone else and to my knowledge, he's not a part of this, so. 
That's all I got, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Stockton. Mr. Durham, if you're still with us. No question, Joe. Thank you, sir. Mr. McDougal. Good afternoon, Mr. Brantley. <clears throat> you have certain information about the relationship between Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis that is not privileged, correct? Well, that was my determination, so I think he disagrees with it. So what we're going to say his opinion is a little irrelevant on that point. Uh, do you understand that the court has ruled that certain information that you have about the relationship between Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade is not privileged? I, the court's ruling, as I understood it and as my lawyers and I understood it, of the privilege not existing was based off of a conversation that was had in my office, in the back of my office, which was confidential, with Mr. Wade and I. That's what was asked of me on yesterday, and that's what the ruling, to my knowledge, unless I'm being corrected here now and saying that it's more, it was that particular piece that the judge said did not have privilege. And have you testified already today to the sum total of your knowledge of the relationship that is outside the scope of the privilege according to the court's ruling? Can you ask that again? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand it. Referring to what you understand to be the information that is not privileged, have you testified to the sum total of that information? I think I have, yes. I've, I think I've testified to, to that, yes. All right, sir. That's my question. Thank, Thank you, Mr. McDougal. Mr. Rice. Okay. Mr. Bradley, Bradley, at least as of February 15th, when you first testified, you said you still considered yourself a I think I said that, yes, I think I did, yes. And you've been friends with Mr. Wade for over 10 years, correct? That would have been fairly accurate, yes. And you recall communicating with Ms. Merchant about this case and about Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis's relationship, correct? I'm going to object as to past and answered and cumulative by all three of the previous. Sure. Uh, let's, we can, we don't delay that foundation. Why don't we combine it with the next question where you've got a new point to make? Okay. Um, Mr. Bradley, when you spoke, when you communicated with Ms. Merchant, did you tell her any lies about Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis's relationship? Did I lie to Ms. That's a simple I mean, question, Mr. Bradley. You're a lawyer. Did you lie to Ms. Merchant when you told her facts about Mr. Wade and Ms. <clears throat> Willis's relationship? Not that I recall. I, I don't recall. Um... I mentioned earlier that I speculated on some things. Um, I've testified to what I did know, uh, so I, I, I can't recall whether or not I... No. Mr. Bradley, speculation is kind of a weaselly lawyer word. Let's speak truth here. Then You're I'm under oath. It's argumentative at this point, Your Honor, because it's not right. a relevant question. Mr. Right, Bradley. Let's find a question, Mr. Rice. Mr. Bradley. When you were communicating different details of the relationship between Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade to Mrs. Merchant, did you lie to her about any of those details? Objection. Asked and answered twice. Uh, I don't think he's answered it yet. I don't recall ever um, whether any of it was a lie or not. Well, this time, so. at the time you were communicating with Ms. Merchant, you were still friends with Mr. Wade, correct? Yes. 
And at the time you were communicating with Ms. Merchant, you knew that she was talking to you in her role and capacity as an attorney in this case, correct? Correct. And you knew that she was going to use that information to somehow benefit and file a motion, benefit her client, correct? I did not know that. Okay, so I, I did not. Oh, I'm sorry. So as, as an attorney yourself, you are testifying here under oath that you had no idea what Ms. Merchant was going to do with all the details that you were giving her about Wade and Willis's relationship. So at the time, no, I did not. I knew that Ms. Merchant was gathering information. That is correct. Okay. And did you lie to her when you told her that the relationship began before 2020? I don't think we need to drill into specifics. He's covered it at a high level. I don't think we're going to get much out of this. Mr. Bradley, isn't it true the only thing that has really changed? Well, you were speaking to Ms. Merchant, whether by text or by telephone. You never said to her that I don't remember or that I'm speculating, correct? I don't recall. Well, you've looked through a whole lot of text messages. Do you remember ever seeing any communication from you that said, I don't remember? Um, yeah, through the messages that, um, I don't have all the messages in front of me, but no, I, I, I don't recall if I ever said, I don't remember. Do you recall seeing any text messages where you replied to her or gave her details where you said, I am speculating about this detail? No, I, I never used the word, um, speculating, no. <clears throat> and the only thing that's changed between then and now is that phone call from Nathan Wade's friend, Gabe Banks, correct? No, well, Gabe was my friend, um, and I, I actually stated that um, the first day that I was here was that um, I've known Gabe for a few years and that um, we were, frater not were, but we are um, fraternity brothers. Um, and so I never said that, uh, um, that anything changed behind gay banks. So you never told Ms. Merchant that you were worried that they were threatening you? Objection. Asked and answered when he was asked this on February 16th and today. <laughs> Mr. Rice, we've covered this. And just to be clear, you didn't attend college with Mr. Banks, did you? I did not attend college with Ms. Banks. So when you refer to a mutual fraternity, brother, y'all just both ha happened to have pledged the same fraternity, different colleges, different chapters. Well, that's what we consider fraternity brothers, yes, sir. And as a normal course of your relationships with your friends, do you pass on lies about your friends? Have I passed on a lie about a friend? Is that what you're asking? Is that something you normally do, Mr. Bradley? Do you tell lies about your friends? I have I told lies about friends? I, I could have. I don't know. Do you tell lies about your friends about a case of national importance? Objection. That's to All right. Overruled. I could have. I, I don't know. Mr. Bradley, I, I notice you're not looking at me. I'm looking at you on the screen only because I was accused of, and I did the same thing to Mr. Sadow when he uh, was on the screen. What's the next question, Mr. Rice? Um, no further questions, Judge. Right. I think it's clear. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Gillum. Good afternoon, Mr. Bradley. Um, <clears throat> a few questions. A lot of folks have taking up the questions that I wanted to ask, but I'll, I've got a few left here. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <clears throat> you said you, uh, Mr. Radley, you said you didn't know what uh, uh, Ms. Merchant was going to be doing with the motion that she sent to you. Remember that testimony a few minutes ago? Um, I think I said I didn't know that. I knew that she was gathering information, yes. Well, let's look at the, at the title of the motion that she sent you. 
Do you that, remember that reading? That was sent on the 6th. Excuse me. Do you remember reading the defendant Michael Roman's motion to dis dismiss grand jury indictment as fatally defective and motion to disqualify the district attorney, her office, and the special prosecutor from further prosecuting this matter? Do you remember seeing that in the draft that you read and reviewed? Yes. So when you tell this court that you didn't know what she was up or what she was going to do, she kind of gave you a hint, didn't she, in the title of the motion that she sent for you to read, didn't she? Yes or no? I read the title of what the motion was. There wasn't anything in the title that threw you off. Pretty straightforward speaking title, isn't it? Correct. So you knew that what she wanted was information from you so that she could then file a motion to dismiss the grand jury indictment, to motion to disqualify the district attorney and her office and the special prosecutor from further prosecuting the matter, right? I'm going to object to speculation. You knew that, didn't you? I overruled. Yes or no? When she sent that motion, yes. Okay. And you knew that the special prosecutor that to, to whom she was referring in that motion was Mr. Wade, correct? He knew that. Yes. Because you read the motion, you said you reviewed it, correct? Yes. And we're not going to go over all of the, you know, number one, because we don't have time, and number two, the, the court wouldn't let me. But, <laughs> but there are a few things that I do want to ask you about. Uh, in that response, in, in that aspect. Now, in that motion that you said you reviewed, on page six of that motion, well, on page five, it starts off with, how do we know this? And there's a question mark. Okay. All right. Yeah, Mr. Gillen, um, you know, I, 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 I can appreciate what you're doing. I think that's something you can do at argument. He said as a whole that he got the motion, and he's had his response as to his opinion of how he handled it. I, I don't see, that, again, this um, uh, really being necessary to go through it line by line of what... Well, I, 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 a, a little indulgence, Your Honor. I'm not going to go, I'm, you know, this isn't going to be a 40-minute you know, a, a death march for the motion. I would like to ask about a few bullet points that, uh, that capture under this, and then I'll move on. But I would yeah. ask the court's indulgence in that respect. You know, I, again, I think, I think he... We, we, I think we've covered it, and I think that you'll be able to argue that this was in that motion and that he had a chance to review it and he never objected to anything in there or raised it. So That's a problem in always ending up last. It, it, it very much is. And next time asked, I'll reshuffle the order. Well, you know, we did earlier with Mr. Uh, Wade, and then I, I hear you. that was kind enough, and then you. the court said we had to go. I need to draw okay. straws next there time. There we go. I'll go with that. All right. Anything Thank else? Thank you, Ron. That's okay. all I have. Okay. Uh, we had Mr. Couture potentially still on Zoom. Yes, Your Honor, and I have just a few questions. All right. Uh, could we add a spotlight to Mr. Couture if I'll let you know when we're able to proceed? <laughs> Judge, before he starts, can I take a five-minute restroom? Uh, absolutely. Two hours? Uh, uh, yeah, we've been going two hours. So let's come back at 4 o'clock. I'll also note for the record that uh, we received a notification from Mr. Cromwell on behalf of Ms. Latham, and he said he was waiving her presence. Uh, and I don't know if he later decided to join us by Zoom, but um, I, I, I don't think he was electing to, uh, to log in. So uh, after Mr. Kucherov, just in terms of timing, uh, Mr. Abadi, uh, do you have any expectation of how long your, if any, questioning would last? I don't imagine my questioning would be very long. Okay. Uh, well, let's get back in at, at 4 o'clock. Uh, Mr. Riley, you can just step out the jury room.
Shapiro, are you still with us? I am, Your Honor. All right, then let's go back on the record. We have Mr. Bradley here, and everyone else is here as well. You may proceed. Uh, Mr. Bradley, did you use any documents to prepare for your testimony today? No, I did not. Last time you spoke with Gabe Banks. The day that, um, I don't have the date, but it was the date of whenever the phone call happened. And you know his wife, Kyra Banks, works for the DA's office, right? Yes, correct. When was the last time you spoke to Mr. Wade? I've spoken to Mr. Wade personally in a year, two years, actually, when I left the firm. Miss Willis. I never, um, my interaction with Miss Willis was never, um, where I would pick up the phone and talk to her or that she would, um, or anything like that. So you, you didn't hang out with Miss Willis? You didn't have a personal relationship with her? No, I, I never had a personal relationship. I mentioned before that I went to a dinner that was after she, um, was elected, um, that was at a steakhouse, but it was some 75 to a hundred people there. So you knew of her, you just didn't have a, a business relationship or a personal relationship with her, or at least a close one. I knew of her from my, she was in the DA's office and I had criminal cases, but I did not personally know her, no. And not having known her, not really hanging out with her, uh, you've got a contract from her office. I'm going to just object as to cumulative, asked and answered throughout the... All right, Mr. Kishore, I think we covered this ground on the 16th about the contracts. Do you have a, are you going somewhere else with this? I am, Judge. If you give me a little latitude, I'll right. tie it right now. Okay, you may proceed. You got a contract from the office, not knowing or having a good relationship or a good working business relationship with Ms. Willis. That's correct. Uh, that's because Nathan Wade steered that contract to you. I don't know how it came about, but it was presented to me um, at the office about the contract, correct? Who presented it to you, Mr. Wade? Yes. Um, is that, and he owed you money, you said at one point. Say that again? Owed you money at one point? I don't recall saying that he owes me money. Did he owe you money at one point? Not that I recall saying that Mr. Wade owes me or owed me money. I don't recall ever saying that. I didn't ask whether you ever said that. I said, did he owe you or did he uh, owe you money in the past? No, he didn't owe me money. And so you, he steered this contract to you, to your office, and you weren't really talking to him? You hadn't talked to him for two years? The contract was in 2021. I didn't leave until 2022. And so you didn't talk with him that whole time? I left in 2022. I haven't really spoke to him since 2022 is what I stated. When I left June of, um, of 2022, around June, August dates of 2022, other than your, I'm going to one last question. Other than your attorney, who did you speak with today about giving testimony in this case today? I spoke to my attorneys, Charles Graham and B.C. Chopra. And I have nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Uh, and again, I'll just double check to make sure. Did Mr. Cromwell ever join us by Zoom? Do we? All right, thank you. So just for the record, Mr. Cromwell has been apparently watching the proceeding. He had waived his client's presence and didn't have any other questions as well. So turning it over to Mr. Abadi. And I have no questions. All right. Mr. Bradley, you can step down. Thank you, sir. Um, Judge, you want these exhibits? Uh, I'll take this one. Thank you.
Madam Chair, excuse me. Uh, right. I have a follow-up based on some questions. It's just about the text. And what, uh, just by way of proffer, what about the text? Just to admit, so when other people asked about the text, some of them were in the record today, so I organized them. They're the ones that have been talked about today, so I just organized them. I just wanted for a point of reference to have them. Okay. okay. Um, and do we need Mr. Bradley for that? I, I don't believe so. But have you marked them? Yes. Have you showed them to the state? I gave the, a copy to the state, but so these okay, Mr. Are, Bradley, just hang on just for one second, just to make sure. I'll give you all of them. So. <coughs> Any all of them? And while he's looking at that, Mr. Bradley handed me uh, Defense Exhibit 23, 24, 25. Judge, I didn't realize that they were this in my folder. Oh, is that from the hearing? Yeah, from on Friday. All right, well, thanks for returning those. <laughs> Let me make sure. <laughs> Okay, so I've got 23, 24, 25. Anything else in your binder? <laughs> All right, good. Okay, and have we come to any conclusions on uh, what? I'm sorry, how did you mark it? I marked it as, I think we're up to 39. Surprisingly, the state of All right, Defense Exhibit 39 is uh, tendered and admitted without objection. Well, no. It, I, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Text messages that weren't referenced today with, uh, are confronted. Okay. It relates to Mr. Bradley. So these are additional text messages, uh, Ms. Merchant? No, so what, so what I did was they objected that they weren't complete because, like, the first part of the text wasn't there. It was just, like, oh, there was something before that that was said. So what I did was I spent this whole time trying to line them up so that I had the beginning of the text, the middle, based on their objection. They have all the text. They can admit all of them yeah. if they want them complete. All right. Um, I... I'm a, I'll, I'll just do this. Just I understand the uh, desire just to have the complete text chain, uh, just for purposes of completing the record. Uh, you know, I, I think that there's no point in having him sit here and authenticate every single one of them. So I'm willing to admit it as a court's exhibit, and the, only the exhibits though that had been previously tendered or referenced in testimony would be ones that actually are relied on for making any findings. But just so it's on the record, we have the complete. Text change, should that ever be an issue for some reason? Any th thoughts about that, Mr. Avati? Uh, my only thoughts are this is not the complete text chain. I was yeah. able to briefly look at Ms. Uh, Merchant's phone when she allowed us to have it for okay. 10 seconds, minutes, and um, there are text messages I know that I saw that are not in what is purported to be states to the 39. Okay. All right. Ms. Merchant, what about that? I let them take screenshots of the ones that they thought weren't there, and he sent them to himself on my phone. I have also offered to hook my phone up to whatever it is. My phone's an iPhone. This is an Android. I can't download like you could in a normal text. I told them if they had a system to get all of my texts, they could have every single one. Well, we can definitely do that. Yeah, Mr. Rice. The text that she's submitting now and tendering into evidence, um, they are specific parts of the conversation. The entire text chain is not a continuous conversation, so it's six oh one. Those particular parts, given the witness's testimony, <coughs> yeah. Um, sure. I think that's a fair point that if he had been uh, confronted with a particular text, that could have been the opportunity to admit it as a prior inconsistent statement for impeachment. Uh, and some of them were. Uh, but apparently some of them were not. I'm taking those out. So it's going to, I'm taking out the ones that they said he wasn't confronted with, and I'm just going to admit the ones that he was confronted with. That's fine. It just makes it more confusing. All right, so we have a newly marked, newly compiled 39. Let's see what the state thinks of that one. All right, regardless, if that's now what is being discussed, again, I don't see a need for Mr. Bradley to be here any longer, so I'm going to excuse him at this point. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Judge, may we be here? Of course. Uh, Take care. Please. Yes, that's right.
So where are we with Defense Exhibit 39? Um, it might be helpful if you look to them so you know what we're talking about, but I can promise him with all of these. Right, I know. So Exhibit 26, I put in so that it made sense, so you could read it. You know when you're reading a text and it's a conversation? Sure. They're upset that they're, they're not in order now. I don't really understand, but if you want to look at them, you can. Well, let me, let's start from the beginning. What is the purpose of Defense Exhibit 39? These are the ones that I showed him and that I showed him today. So there were a lot of follow-up questions on it, and so I realized, okay, well, they should just be in the record because other people are referring to my text, and they might as well just be in the record. And he authenticated all of them. All so, right. And Mr. Rice? Not just in the record, Judge. They should be admitted as substantive evidence to the defendant's prior consistent statements. Okay. All right, so to that end, Mr. Avati, is there a particular text message in there you think was not authenticated? I, I, I understand you're saying, well, maybe one of them's already been admitted, so. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, just having a omnibus, here are all the relevant text messages exhibit. Is there an authentication objection? Is there a, any other kind of objection like that? Yes, they didn't authenticate that all of the text messages were from him and between uh, Ms. Merchant or the context of I think that's the problem when you don't, if, for example, if the state was to pro provide, uh, I guess, just a specific text chain from a, a cell phone extraction, there would be an objection because the state would be making the determination as to what is to be, what is relevant. Really, all the information should be turned over, and it's for the parties to object in your honor to determine which parts of the conversation are relevant or not. I don't have all of the conversation. The conversation starts in September, and then, so there's a few text messages from September, and then we jump to January. Ms. Merchant has determined that that jump in between is not relevant. That's, that's not appropriate. It's for your honor to determine what's relevant and not. And I can't make an objection as to what I don't know. I can tell you what I've read. It seems as if there are definitely parts that are missing that would make certain parts of the text message she's or attempting to admit that she didn't confront the witness with would be my um, uh, objection. Uh, but only the relevance can only be determined if we have the full chain. So she's determined which ones are relevant. That's your job. Sure. So uh, did she, didn't she? did she just try to do the full chain as an exhibit just a moment ago? No, we, we don't have the full chain. The full chain is text messages that begin in September and continue down. That's not <coughs> contained in that entire package. They're on her phone. Okay. She'd like us to do it in a track. <coughs> just, just that chain. All right. Ms. Merchant. Technology. And then I'll, Mr. Mr. Gillen. Yeah, not a problem. And I offered that when we were here before, and I was told they didn't have that technology. Um, but let me just go through them one by one. It might be easier. I was trying to just do it quickly. Also, you can just hand them to me. So the first. Just hand them to me. I can read them. And, Ms. and, and while I'm reading them, Mr. Gillen, what did you have to add? Great point, Your Honor. Apparently, Ms. Merchant has um, allowed the, the state to, to take screenshots of what they now contend would be the larger perspective on, and I disagree with them about uh, the rule of completeness, but it's their job when something is admitted that if they have an objection because the context is, is not appropriate, they then move and the state to the move <coughs> the rule of completeness, the admissibility of the other uh, emails uh, change that they had. So the real issue here is their failure to comply with the rule of completeness once they have the material uh, from the last hearing that they could screenshot that. Well, isn't that what he's doing now? Because now they're being tendered? I don't, I don't think that he is. Uh, I mean, it seemed to me that uh, what was happening here is this, this person has tried several different ways to get it in. <clears throat> she wanted everything in, and they objected to that, and she wanted the segments in that had been... Uh, the, the witness had been asked about, and that's what she's trying to do. My point is, is that if they're at the time of, of frankly, of moving under the rule of completeness, is at the time of uh, the tendering. If they want to tender something to show that it should, it should be included to be complete, that's on them, sure. not on this merchant. All right, Mr. Body, last last point here. Oh. I had a very limited time with Miss Merchant's cell phone. I only had time to literally find one 
one part of the text message to then send to myself before Ms. Merchant demanded her phone back. So I did not have the opportunity <coughs> to screenshot every act or every missing part of the conversation to then do as Mr. Gillum is saying that should be done, but it can't be done if I don't have the information. So I, you don't have the complete packet, and there are many of the text message uh, screenshots that you have printed out that were not used to confront Mr. Bradley or refresh his recollection. So they're inadmissible evidence. If, if anyone missed the opportunity, it was the defense counsel sure. to confront him. <coughs> All right. Uh, I don't think we need to get back and forth any further. Ms. Merchant, you've offered, you said, to print out a complete chain of every text exchange with Mr. Bradley since you began corresponding with him. I'll give you the chance to do that, and you can follow up by email uh, with that exhibit. It would be the complete chain without any deletions or uh, removals, and we'll have that marked as um, Defense Exhibit 39. Thank you. And I have got to respond, though. In court Friday at 157, um, when Mr. Abadi texted himself the screenshots, I literally wrote him, do you want any other screenshots? I have nothing to hide. You can download my phone if you want. So, it, it, I don't. All right, we're done. Okay, so uh, I'll wait back to hear from you all on Exhibit 39. Uh, and uh, is there anything else to take up before we discuss uh, Friday? Um, just kind of throwing it open to the floor. Uh, seeing none, uh, I believe I asked and put it out there among defense counsel to be considering how they would like to uh, organize their arguments on Friday. Uh, has there been any uh, decisions reached on that? <coughs> okay. And I can email the court when we're done with that. But we are going to make it as efficient as possible and break it up. Break it up in, in terms of like subject matter or something like that. If there's time limits. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the idea. <coughs> well, I'll start with what is it that you're asking for? We'll start there. It's kind of curious. Well, I don't think yeah. we can answer that right now. Number one, <coughs> the court said, look, if you divide it up, then we can go with that. Uh, or if you can't divide it up, then I'll give each defense counsel a specific period of time. Tomorrow, we'll find out when we meet whether or not we can divide it up uh, in a way that serves the interest of our respective clients. Hopefully, we can. We can communicate with the court. Okay. Uh, I'll just wait to hear from you. Um, to the point of, I think the state recently filed um, their own motion to, I, I think it formally said to reopen the evidence as to another witness. I only got to read it very briefly, or I don't know if that was just saying in the alternative we'd like to reopen the evidence. I don't know, maybe someone can clarify that. But my thought uh, there and uh, what I think we ought to do Friday and what I would like to do on the issue of the cell phone analysis and this other affidavit filed by the state today is that uh, uh, both parties, uh, any party rather, uh, can make whatever arguments they want based on a proffer any counter arguments they want to make based on a proffer. Uh, they would not be admitted into evidence at this point. And at this point, I need to start hearing the arguments in the law and what we've heard so far. And if I think I'm able to reach a ruling based on that, I will. Um, however, if I think that the, the proffer is going to make a material determinative point, we, we can reopen the evidence at that point. But um, just the bottom line is on Friday, I, I do um, the intention is that we're still sticking with argument. Uh, but the parties are free to address some of these issues that have been brought up post-hearing if they'd like to. Your Honor, excuse me. Uh oh Sorry. Uh, let me start I'm, with Mr. Say. I'm, I'm alive and well with a quick question. All right. That suggests that we do not have to have a witness present on Friday for the cell phone record. That's right. Friday would just be argument, and uh, counsel can proffer why they think it's significant. And if once I've heard the law and the argument of counsel, I decide that that is going to have some material bearing on the outcome, then uh, we, will, we can reopen the evidence and have it properly admitted and authenticated and subject to cross-examination. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Merchant. Um, I just wanted to know if the court wanted us to focus our arguments on anything. Any questions you wanted us to try? Uh, well, actually, uh, I think what I'm more – likely to do is, is more along the lines of what I suggested before, is give you all a, a time block and you use the time however you think is more effective, uh, what you think is your strongest argument. I don't, um, 
a lot has been covered. And there's a lot in the motions that weren't covered during the evidentiary hearing that I would plan to rule on at the same time as well. So I leave that to you. All right, thank you. Mr. Killen? Uh, I know we have other motions to hear on Friday. Oh, we do? No, I thought we did. I just said disqualification as a whole. So if you have arguments about forensic misconduct, about anything like that, this would be, that would be the time for that argument but as I well. I consider that part of the disqualification. Sure. I thought we had scheduled hearings on the murder of <laughs> You know, no, I mean, I talked about that, and then things evolved. So uh, we didn't actually send out a notice uh, adding any other motions, but I, uh, we do need to. We have some trials starting next week. Uh, the next two weeks we've got um, some of our homicide trials already scheduled, so I'm going to be following up with you all to schedule the rest of the pretrial motions that we have. So the only arguments that we have on Friday being 1 o'clock on the issue of disqualification. That's right, all things disqualification. Uh, uh, anything from the state or any other defense counsel? All right, thank you all. All right, we're off the record.